This first lesson is going to be all about uh, way, different ways you can measure angles. Um, we're going to be talking about measuring angles in two different ways, using degrees and using radians. Uh, radians is something new that you probably haven't seen before. Um, all it is is it's just another unit of measurement um, for, for an angle, just like you would have different units of measurement for length. So for instance, you can measure something in inches or in centimeters, or um, you could measure time in minutes or hours. Um, so there are just different units of measurement, but we have to kind of get used to what a radian means um, to understand how we're going to use it. Um, so what a radian actually is, um, if I take <clears throat> the radius of my circle, so here's my radius, I just highlighted it in red. So whatever that length is, if I, like, if you can imagine if I, like, put it onto the top of the circle here, so I would take that flat, straight length, and if I like kind of curved it onto the circle so that they were the same length. So if I said this is length r for my radius, then this would also be length r. Um, this, the same measurement, it's just that one is curved on the circle and one is a straight radius. Um, if I did that, then and then I connected the center of the circle with the end of that that distance, then this angle right here that I just marked with theta, um, that's a Greek letter, um, that would be <clears throat> considered one radian. Um, and radian measures are always going to be written in terms of pi. Um, so in the next few problems, we're going to talk about how you can go back and forth, how you can take something in degrees and convert it into radians and vice versa. So in these examples, we're going to take something that is already in degrees, which you can tell because if you look at each problem, A, B, and C, um, it says 45 degrees, 175 degrees. Oh, this one's missing its degree, but negative 130 degrees. Um, we're going to take those and we're going to write those um, in a radian measurement. So a couple things uh, that you need to know. Over here on the, the right side um, are some, <clears throat> some things that you can kind of use to gauge your answers. Um, so a full circle, if you went all the way around, would be 360 degrees. Um, in, in the same circle, if you go all the way around in radians, it would be going around 2 pi radians. So that's, one, that's a full circle. And then half a circle, uh, if you go around in degrees, would be 180 degrees. And then half a circle in radians is pi radians. Um, I said in the previous slide that when we talk about measurements in radians, we'll always be using pi. Um, so that's kind of one way you can tell the difference. If it has the degree symbol, it's in degrees. If it has pi, it's in radians. Um, so what I want to really do is focus in on uh, this box right here where it talks about how to go from, from degrees to radians. Um, so there's kind of like a little formula that we're going to use. We're going to take the degree measurement that we were given, which in our problem here is 45, and we're going to multiply by this, this little multiplier, um, which is pi over 180. So anytime uh, you start with degrees, you multiply by pi over 180, and that's going to give you your, your measurement in radians. Um, so if you'll notice here, we have like a degree and a degree, one on top, one on bottom. Those cancel out, so that's our degrees are gone. And all we have to do is uh, reduce. So if I wrote this together, if I multiplied straight across, I would have 45 pi. And then this is really like 45 over 1. Uh, I can make it into a fraction. And then if I multiply the denominator straight across, 1 times 180 is 180. This is not our final answer, though, because we can reduce. Um, so I can reduce 45 over 180. Um, <clears throat> and if I do that, they actually all, everything reduces by 45. So 45 divided by itself would be 1. So I'm not even going to write the 1. It's just going to be pi. And then 180 divided by 45 is 4. So our final answer would be pi over 4. Now, the easiest way to reduce these fractions, uh, because it might not immediately be obvious um, what you can reduce it by, we can put it into the calculator. So in the calculator, there's kind of a, a catch. Um, you want to bring up a fraction. So remember to do that, you press um, alpha y equals. That brings up your fraction menu. And then you want to choose option 1. That gives you just a regular fraction. So in your calculator, it's going to be a box, like an open box over an open box. And what you want to do is type in 45 over 180. And you'll notice I did not write pi. Um, and the reason is because if you put in the pi, 
it's going to multiply 3.14 blah 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 into our number and we don't want pi to be a part of it we just want to reduce the numbers that are not pi um, so if you reduce those it would give you in your calculator one fourth and then you have to remember to put the pi back in so the pi you have to know that it goes there but to reduce the numbers you can just put the our regular numbers the 45 and the 180 into your calculator okay let's move on to question B um, so I have 175 degrees and I'm going to multiply it by our little multiplier pi over 180 so in the calculator you're going to put in 175 over 180 and then you just have to remember that the pi goes there <clears throat> when you put it into the calculator it's going to reduce your fraction to 35 over 36 and then your pi always goes in the numerator uh, with whatever that top number is so our final answer would be 35 pi over 36. now this last one um, there's a negative in front it actually doesn't make our problem any more difficult it just means that our answer in radians will also be negative so i'm going to take negative 130 and multiply it by pi over 180 <clears throat> in your calculator you're going to put negative 130 over 180 and remember that <clears throat> even though you don't put the pi in your calculator we just have to remember that it's still there when you reduce in your calculator it's going to give you negative 13 over 18 and then don't forget to put pi back in so final answer would be negative 13 pi over 18 now we're going to go backwards so now we're going to start with our answers or with our problems in radians and we want our answer to be something in degrees um, so we're going to do almost the exact same thing. I want to focus in on this middle box right here. Um, now, instead of multiplying by pi over 180, we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Um, and the way I kind of remember this, and I'm going to go ahead and start this first problem. So I'm going to take 7 pi over 4, and I'm going to multiply it by 180 over pi. So what I like to do here, um, the way I remember it anyway, is... If I want to go from radians to degrees, that means I want pi to cancel. Like, I don't want pi in my answer. So if you look at what I have here, you'll notice that I have pi in the numerator right here and pi in the denominator. Those are going to cancel each other out. So anytime that you're trying to get two degrees, you want your pi's to cancel. Anytime you're trying to stay or get to, from degrees to radians, you want pi to stay. So you want pi to be in, on the top of your fraction that you're multiplying. Okay, so back to this problem. The pi's canceled, like we just talked about. Now, in order to simplify this, um, you, you have a couple options. My personal opinion um, is that the easiest way to do this is in your calculator to multiply 7 times 180 um, <clears throat> and then divide your answer by 4. So 7 times 180 is 1260. And then the only thing left in the denominator here is this 4. And now all I have to do is 1260 divided by 4 and it gives me 315. So that means that 7 pi over 4 radians is the same as 315 degrees. Um, now what I just did, uh, you don't need to take as many steps. I just wanted to show you where everything came from. So up here on the top, I'm going to show you what I would actually do in my calculator, which I, I think is the fastest. So in my calculator, I would do 7 times 180 divided by 4. So I would do it all in one step. Um, and when you put that into your calculator, it's going to give you, it's automatically going to take you to the, the 315. So this step right here, this intermediate step where I put the 1260, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to make sure you saw where everything was coming from. All right, next one, negative pi over 3. So again, the negative doesn't make this any more complicated. It just means that our answer in degrees will also be negative. So I'm going to take my uh, radians, negative pi over 3, and I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel, which is what I want to happen. And then it, what I'm going to do is just multiply straight across. So my answer will be negative. Um, in your calculator, you could do negative 1 times 180 and then divide it by 3. And uh, it will give you negative 60. So what that means is that negative pi over 3 radians is equivalent to negative 60 degrees. And then last but not least, 5 pi over 12. So again, I'm going to take 5 pi over 12, and I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel, which is what we want. And then I'm going to multiply 5 times 180. So let me write this up here. 5 times 180 
divided by 12. So you multiply the two numbers that are on the tops of the fraction and then divide by the number that's on the bottom of the fraction. And when you do that, it's going to come out to 75 degrees. So 75, and then make sure you put your degrees. So 5 pi over 12 radians is equivalent to 75 degrees.